אזרחי ישראל, אנחנו במלחמה. U.S. military is now rushing military supplies and air defenses to Israel. We stand with Israel. Violence has erupted in Israel and the Gaza Strip after Hamas, the ruling militant group in Gaza, launched a major attack on Israel on the 7th of October. Israel has responded with a declaration of war against Hamas, and casualties have been increasing on both sides as the conflict continues. Thousands of Israeli reservists have been called up, and there is an intense airstrike campaign targeting Gaza. A lot of nations have come out to declare their support for Israel, especially the United States. The U.S. didn't just pledge support. It's also sending in support. So what has the U.S. done, and how will it affect the outcome of this war? Join us as we discuss how the Pentagon just confirmed that it's sending deadly forces to Israel. Before we go into details, let us first explain what exactly happened. A massive barrage of rockets rained down on Israel from Gaza on Saturday, October 7th. Hamas militants fired up to 5,000 projectiles, overwhelming Israel's Iron Dome defense system. Some of the rockets pierced through the security barriers allowing Hamas fighters to infiltrate and attack several Israeli towns along the border. This horrific assault claimed the lives of many Israelis, including children and elderly, and abducted others. The death toll from this conflict has risen to over 700 Israelis. Israel has retaliated with airstrikes, killing at least 400 Palestinians. Israel has declared war and sworn to avenge its fallen citizens. Meanwhile, a senior Hamas leader boasts that they have captured 100 Israelis as hostages. Hamas is a Palestinian Islamist militant group that seeks to establish an independent Palestinian state. They rule the Gaza Strip, a narrow coastal enclave that borders Israel and Egypt. They are considered a terrorist organization by many countries, including Australia, the United States, and the European Union, because of their armed resistance against Israel, which is backed by Iran. Hamas emerged as a branch of the Palestinian Muslim Brotherhood in the late 1980s. In 2007, they seized control of the Gaza Strip after defeating their rival political party, Fatah, which leads the Palestinian Liberation Organization, or PLO, and governs the West Bank, another Palestinian territory. Now, the United States has announced its commitment to providing munitions and equipment to Israel while increasing American military presence in the Middle East in response to the attacks by Hamas. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin revealed that the United States plans to deploy multiple military ships and aircraft closer to Israel as a demonstration of support. In a statement released by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, it was announced that the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group would be repositioned in the eastern Mediterranean, bringing it closer to Israel. This carrier strike group is a formidable force consisting not only of the aircraft carrier itself, but also a guided missile cruiser and four guided missile destroyers. This strategic move underscores the United States' commitment to supporting Israel during this challenging time. Furthermore, the United States is actively working to enhance its air capabilities in the region. This initiative involves strengthening U.S. Air Force squadrons, which encompass a range of fighter aircraft, including F-35, F-15, F-16, and A-10 aircraft. These aircraft are vital components of the U.S. military's capabilities in the region and will contribute to bolstering Israel's defense. The White House has also communicated its unwavering support for Israel. President Joe Biden assured Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in their Sunday conversation that additional assistance for Israel Defense Forces is en route, with a commitment to providing even more support in the days ahead. Vice President Kamala Harris also engaged in discussions with Israeli President Isaac Herzog, further solidifying the strong ties between the two nations. In a subsequent statement, the Pentagon emphasized Defense Secretary Austin's communication with Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. During their conversation, Austin reiterated U.S. support for Israel and expressed solidarity with the Israeli people. The two leaders discussed the ongoing efforts efforts by Israel to restore security and safety following the reprehensible terrorist attack by Hamas. It was also confirmed that the United States would be providing munitions to Israel, underscoring the depth of the commitment to ensuring Israel's security and stability in the region. The statement said the secretary reaffirmed the unwavering support of the United States for Israel's right to defend itself. Austin also underscored that the U.S. steps were taken to strengthen the U.S. military posture in the region to bolster regional
regional deterrence efforts. The United States is concerned that Hamas's deadly attacks may have been aimed at disrupting a potential normalization of relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. It wouldn't be a surprise that part of the motivation may have been to disrupt efforts to bring Saudi Arabia and Israel together, along with other countries that may be interested in normalizing relations with Israel, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken told CNN on Sunday in regard to the attacks. In a troubling development, CNN reported on Sunday, October 8th, that at least three Americans were among the casualties, according to U.S. memo. The memo also stated that several other Americans were injured or missing and that the U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv was working to provide consular assistance. The U.S. decision to bolster its support for Israel comes amid growing international condemnation of the violence and calls for a ceasefire. The U.N. Security Council held an emergency meeting on Sunday but failed to agree on a joint statement due to opposition from China and Russia, who accused the U.S. of blocking diplomatic efforts. The U.S. has also faced criticism from some of its allies, such as France and Germany, who urged both sides to show restraint and respect international humanitarian law. However, the U.S. has maintained that Israel has the right to defend itself against terrorist attacks and that Hamas bears full responsibility for the escalation. The U.S. hopes that its increased military presence in the region will deter further attacks by Hamas and prevent the conflict from spreading to other countries. The U.S. has expressed its condolences to the families of the victims vowed to bring those responsible to justice. The U.S. has also urged its citizens in Israel to remain vigilant and follow the instructions of local authorities. Not everyone in the U.S. seems to be on the same page, though. On Sunday, October 8th, a gathering of a few dozen pro-Palestinian protesters took place with demonstrations congregating at prominent locations, such as Times Square in New York City and the vicinity of the White House in Washington. Their purpose was to voice their opposition to the United States' long-standing support for Israel's actions in the ongoing conflict. The protesters conveyed their dissent through a variety of means, with some prominently displaying banners bearing slogans such as End U.S. Aid and Resistance is Not Terrorism. These messages encapsulated their frustration and concern over the role of American and assistance in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which has been a contentious issue for many years. However, these demonstrations drew criticism from New York Governor Kathy Hochul, who publicly condemned the plans for such gatherings, labeling them as morally repugnant. The attack by Hamas, which triggered these protests, represent a significant and tragic development in the ongoing conflict. It stands as one of the most substantial and deadliest incursions into Israel territory since the Yom Kippur War in 1973, when Egypt and Syria launched a surprise attack in an effort to reclaim lost territory. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has also labeled the attack on Israel as a terrorist attack by a terrorist organization. This highlights the international community's concerns about the violence in the region and its impact on civilians on both sides of the conflict. While there was relative calm in most of Israel on Sunday, October 8th, the situation in Gaza remained highly volatile. Gaza, a Palestinian enclave that has been under Israeli blockade blockade has been a focal point for unrest for weeks. Youth groups in Gaza have been protesting against the backdrop of long-standing grievances, which include the Israeli military occupation, the Palestinian national cause, and prolonged economic strife. These protests have added to the complexity of the situation, further fueling tensions. Secretary Blinken's statement also touches upon the broader geopolitical context. He mentions that there is no concrete evidence linking Iran to the recent attack on Israel. However, he acknowledges the enduring ties between Iran and Hamas, which governs Gaza. This acknowledgement raises questions about the indirect influence of regional powers on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, potential for external factors to exacerbate an already delicate situation. As the conflict unfolds, the international community will continue to monitor the developments closely and seek ways to promote peace and dialogue in the region. But at the moment, the U.S. is standing with Israel and showing full support.